Doug will call the meeting to order at 7.05. Now, let me go to my, is somebody trying to speak? No, I didn't. Now, I'm gonna to go to my agenda. Yep. And uh, last week I sent, yeah, yes. I hear someone trying to speak. Hmm. It's ET. <laughs> yeah, really. All right. Well, I'm going to continue. <laughs> I got somebody that I can't really hear. I can't hear them either, John, at all. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to continue. Uh, I have minutes from two meetings. The first was a regular session minute from May 4th. And the second was a special meeting that we had on August 18th. Did you guys get a chance to read those? I did. And I okay. approve. Okay. Yeah, I, I looked them both over. They seem fine to me. Minutes. All right, so I'll call that a uh, bill with a, a motion and, and Doug with a second. Any questions or comments on those? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Um, okay, our, our meeting calendar has us meeting on the second Tuesday of each month from October through May. Uh, Bill, is, is that a, a conflict for you? Um, I do have a, a Trout Unlimited board meeting, and it's usually the first Tuesday okay. of the month, so that shouldn't be a problem. Margaret, how about you? I know it's it, it, your schedule's always tight. I have been often going to PVGA board meetings, which are often but not always on the second Tuesday. Okay. So... Um, but I don't, so it is a little bit of a conflict. Um, okay. But I don't quite know. I have another meeting the first Tuesday. I could most off. I can usually come on the third Tuesday, but sometimes I have to go to CISA board members meetings on the third Tuesday. So yeah. I feel. Uh, it's complicated. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. It, 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 do you have a suggestion for another time that we could meet? Um. Yeah, I guess other nights of the week are that Tuesdays are the only night of the week that I have those very regular things. Okay. Uh, so I guess if other people could do a different night, that could be good for me. But I, I hate you, if you are, landed on if Tuesdays are mostly good. That seems. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and in the past, I got to say that if there is a conflict, then for one meeting or two meetings, we can get along without you. Yes, certainly. No. I think. Yeah. You okay. Can. We, it, uh, okay. Does, does everyone want to keep the second Tuesday of the month? I, I, I vote for that. Okay. Jim, what do you say? I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Okay. Doug? Yeah. Okay. That's yep. fine. I'll just, if I'll just, um, you know, make a choice depending yeah. on what's well, most And pressing. you know what? Usually if there's something that's pressing and you can't attend, we, we get together and we'll talk about it or you'll get together with one of us and we can at least get the basic facts to present to the committee. That's fine. Okay. Um, contact information. Anybody have any changes that I need to know about? Nope. No. No. Okay. That, that's helpful as well. And we don't have to talk about it tonight, but we should start thinking about the officers for the AGCOM for 2022. Don't need it tonight, but we should be thinking about that. Okay. Doug's doing a great job as Prez. Go, Doug. Seconded. <laughs> so, lonely at the top. But, uh, hey. <laughs> it's like the Three Stooges where they look for a volunteer and everybody steps back except one guy. <laughs> okay. Uh, we were talking about 
uh, crop progress and conditions at the very top of the meeting. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear from Margaret next on, on what it, what's the, the word from CESA. I know that there's some special funding available, emergency funding for uh, disaster. Yes. Yeah, there it's a, it's a moment of grant opportunities for farmers, which is pretty unusual. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I really recommend that any farm that had any pandemic related expenses that you haven't gotten covered from some other source apply for these USDA pandemic response and safety grants. Yeah. Um, and if you don't have the link and stuff, let me know and I'll send it to you. It's a it is it is unlike most other grants there it is not competitive they're going to fund anybody who meets the the requirements it's certainly possible that they'll run out of money and if they do that they're going to prorate it so you would get less and it's not a huge sum of money in any case they go up to they're between 1500 and 20000 dollars but if you you know, bought hand sanitizer, masks, gloves, if you put up plexiglass shields, if you put a window in your farm stand so that you were, you know, handing produce out the window instead of having people come in, if you made any market pivots, so you, you know, started doing online ordering or you bought a new truck so you could do delivery, um, basically you just have to say to them, I spent this much money on this thing and in theory, they are going to reimburse you up to $20,000, which obviously if you made big changes, $20,000 is not huge, but it's easy <laughs> and it's not competitive. You don't have to write a whole song and dance about, you know, how important your shift was for everyone in the world. You just have to say, I spent this money. So is, the only complication of this grant is that you have to get this number called a DUNS number, which is a federal yeah. number that takes a little bit of time. And so waiting till the deadline is not recommended. And I can't remember right this minute when the deadline is, but it's in November. Is CISA assisting with the uh, signups? Um, we are happy to help people. We're not expecting, it's pretty easy. So the, okay. the help that I can do is send you the right links and I can yeah. send you or anyone you know who might like to see it, the application form, which because it's an online application and and they, they ha you have to fill it out in order to see it. Like you have to fill out page one in order to see page two, which is very I, annoying I got you. in my okay. opinion, because you'd yeah, like yeah. to see where you're going. Um, yeah. So we have screenshots of it that we can send you and we're happy to help if you run into trouble, but really it's pretty easy. So I really and, recommend, I mean, I, and one thing that I will do is I will include the links in my minutes. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. So yeah. that way we'll kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. And then okay. the other one is the, you know, the state food security infrastructure grants, which they did, you know, the first summer of the pandemic, they did them at that point, it was a rolling application. And so, you know, people who applied early had some real advantages compared to people who applied late. So they're not doing that this year. And this year, they're all due at, on Halloween at midnight. Uh, wow. the, the money there is much bigger, those go up to $500,000. Um, but correspondingly, you have to do more work. <laughs> Um, right, and that truly is a grant. And it's a grant. They're going to make choices. Everybody will not get it. We are it. really willing to help with those. We're willing to help you talk. You know, if you or anyone you know um, wants to kind of has several different ideas and wants to talk them through, or you know, writes a a rough draft and it can be very rough of your application, and then wants to send it to us to get us to help you, you know, craft it. We're really happy to do that. Um, and we're that, expecting that, to do a lot of those in the next, you know, between now and the end of the month. That is very helpful. That, that's good information. Because most of the disaster programs are run through Farm Service Agency. This one, this grant program is not. Yeah. So. And okay. we are expecting to open our emergency farm fund as well. Those are, you know, zero interest loans. So they're not as, grants are better than loans, but... Um, yes. It, we're probably not going to open that till the winter because it just seemed like people need a little time to, you know, 
get to a point where there's a little bit of a break and you can stop Correct. and think. And if you're going to apply for any of these other ones, you've done it because their deadlines are coming so soon. So yes. um, we're probably not going to do that till after into the new year. Um, but we are expecting. Oh, oh, to do that. Okay. But that's on the horizon as well. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Thank you, Mark. I have a general question. Uh, um, uh, grants, are they taxable? How does that work? Um, yeah, that's a little complicated. Sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't. Often, like those food security infrastructure grants are taxable. It, it can be that if you, like if you're going to put in a new refrigerator, refrigeration, you know, a cooler, if you get the money in the same tax year as you spend it, it should cancel itself out. But it depends mm -hmm. a little bit on how you do your taxes and how you manage depreciation. And it's definitely worth talking to whoever you does your taxes. Um, That's about that. my line as well. Talk to your tax professional. Yeah. Yes. Thank you again, Margaret. So, yeah, I mean, uh, spread the word because, I mean, one of them is bigger money and one of them is smaller money, but really should be really easy. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to send a draft copy of my minutes your way before they, they hit the press. So okay. I'll make sure to get the facts straight. Okay. Jim Galonka. Yes. How is things there? How is your farm stand? No, actually we're still fairly busy. You know, we, we had some issues with production. Corn was a big problem because Yes. We planted in the field, flooded out and, and at the wrong time. <laughs> 14 inches of rain in July will do that. Yeah. Although yeah. I drove by today and I saw sweet corn still on the stand. So that's. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have that for good. another couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. So, all in all, a decent year. How would it compare to last year? Oh, uh, last year was definitely a lot better growing weather and, and okay. sales wise, everything. So. We, uh, you know, this year we, we, we did really well on tomatoes, believe it or not. They were the phenomenal crop this year. <laughs> and right now yeah. we basically have nothing. We sold everything. <laughs> we have wow. enough to get through another week or so. Plants are barren. And uh, yeah. last yeah. year we, we still, I left, like the last planting was, you know, planted at the same time and they, uh, we we didn't harvest half of them this year. We they're all gone basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, the the farmers' almanac, if you believe in any part of that, says that we're supposed to get a heavy winter. And if you look back a couple of years, we had snow nineteen days from now in one year. So maybe maybe fall's coming. So, uh, but then again, so yeah. Now, let me just interject something here real quick. I remember, again, I'm not a native. I've only been here 50 years or something. But I remember, I remember uh, it was early to mid-September, we'd get killer frosts. Yes. Around here. You yes. don't see that anymore. No. If for USDA, our, our first frost date is September 15th. But but you don't see that. No global warming is is a key there. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Doug, you guys don't yeah. have many very many field crops this year, but boy, that was a genius move. Yeah, we were uh, we dropped about eighty acres of field production. Um, went from maybe two hundred to about one twenty, and. Yeah. Uh, and we, uh, our, my bookkeeper just the other day said, uh, you know, year to date, our sales are only about 10% off. Wow. Uh, off of last year, which is partially the weather. And uh, um, <clears throat> and uh, you know, and and somewhat related to to having fewer things available, but. Uh, um, and we we did we did get some small pieces here and there. Um, so you know, I think the the total number of cases is off a little more than ten percent. Um, yeah. Um, but all in all, but we uh, we also found that uh, by dropping some some more labor intensive crop harvest and 
more some of the more difficult things to produce the uh our our labor as a percentage of sales each week is is much lower than it's ever been um and uh yeah. you know that's despite um our average wages being up about two dollars an hour uh over last year wow. people are making people are making about 15 percent more than they did last year and uh oh. and we're and our labor as a percentage of sales is down considerably so we're we're growing a lot of dog crops farm smarter not harder huh yeah yeah but uh you know you you see you dry, you go around you see a lot of land not being used um i, I did and, i've uh, noticed that of course, yeah, I, you know, on kind of a personal note, on my ride to work every morning, I ride by the Sharla property, and that place is still wet. I don't think it's dried out this year at all. And that was yeah, a piece that, of used to farm. That piece is that piece is either a, a, a desert or a swamp, and uh, yeah, I would I would I can I can you know, <laughs> it, it's a rare it's a rare year where it's all good usable land um, yeah, right so so that brings me to the last four things that we need to talk about the first is aprs margaret any 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 movement on aprs yeah actually there i i just got an email this week from michelle padula at mdar who said they've been talking to um the ashmans and yeah. Um, you all probably remember that the Ashmans had, you know, gone forward with with APR to put the land that's across the street from Doug and DeWitt's home farm into APR. And and that had all moved ahead and it got voted on at town meeting. But then their barn blew down. And I think they Doug, if you know more about this, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they store some stuff in that barn that isn't related to agriculture. And they were worried that if they wanted to rebuild it and store lawnmowers or whatever it is in there, they might not be able to do it if it was in APR. So they've negotiated with MDAR and they're, they're taking out a piece out of the APR so that they can, if they want to rebuild, they can rebuild on it and it won't be part of the APR land. So they're moving forward. So that's, that's good news. Uh, okay. Does that have to come back to town meeting? No, right? No, it doesn't. I mean, the the it has to be reassessed, which okay. seems it, you know that seems to happen almost every time. And I, I mean, in we this case, that. in this case, there's a a reason for it because they okay. they did yep. have to do this reconsideration. But it seems to happen almost every time anyway. And yes. what's likely to have happened is that the value of the land has gone up. But nice. MDR won't pay anymore. So then they might come back to us and say, there's a bigger gap than there was before. Will you increase the local match? And, you know, we'll have to decide, like, do we want to take that to the, to the, through the community right. preservation process? But it might be that the Ashmans just say, you know, it's okay. We're getting the same amount of money as we thought we were going to get before. And we're, we're okay with that. That, okay. I mean, that would be the easiest outcome. Yes. But that's there still... Again. Talk to your tax professional to see what you want to do on that. Right. And then they can claim a bigger bargain. They can claim a bargain sale and that may have some tax benefits for them. Hey, that, you know, Margaret, that is a really good segue into Community Preservation Act status. Super. Mr. Doug. Yeah. Any, any news? Um, I, 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 think, I think if you're really pro or anti uh kids recreational hockey rink uh you should come to the the uh public hearing tomorrow uh, no okay. i mean you know, judy judy markland did ask me to uh to just kind of mention you know there's a 2019 to 2020 cpc plan i think they've kind of updated some of their some of their goals and things like that i mean High on the list here is uh, you know preserving preserving farm property and right. um, and you know that hasn't um, I I about a twelve or thirteen page document that I I have here in front of me 
And, um, you know, it's, uh, pr- protecting farmland, um, is, is a, is a high price for, okay. for CPC. So not, nothing is nothing. That's, that, that's like the, the CPC mission statement that you have that's 13 pages long. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Doug, when, when's the deadline for applying for CPC funds? Is it still second week of May, uh, second week of December? Um, I, I don't, I really don't know. Um, okay. it, I don't think it's in this document here. I don't think we have anything in the pipeline. So I yeah, think. No, right. I, I don't think Ashman's are, are there. They're close. No, they've already been done. They've been oh, through okay. that. Oh, that's right. They did. Yeah. Um, how about Smith's? That's done. That's done. Okay. Yeah, and Fran Sobieski was the last one, the oh, other one right. that we did recently, and that's done. And Sobieski's done too. Oh, well, that's awesome. Yeah. So, okay. Now, this kind of segues into me and the resource replacement fees, and that's for ground mounted solar. And it, it, the, 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 it's something that we're batting around as a committee right now. And I attended one meeting and I was driving home from the Cape while I was doing it. So I don't have any notes, but uh, it's, it seems as though the initiative is going to affect um, chapter 61 land. If chapter 61 land is going into solar, in other words, coming out of 61 and going into a solar field, according to Judy Marklin, those solar fields can't be bigger than 10 acres in the town of Waitley by bylaw rule. And th- we're trying to come up with a replacement fee for such an event where that land would be coming out of agriculture for ground mounted solar. So I, I don't have any opinion on this before I, you know, before I brought this to your attention. Um, if you want to talk about it tonight, that's fine. If you want to email me, that's fine too. Uh, what do you guys think, or what 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 should we do? Are they talking, John? Just, I mean, I feel like we talked before about it in principle. Like, do yeah. we think this is a good idea? So, are you now getting down to like how big should the fee be? Uh, right. Yes. In fact, let me see what I have from Margaret today. I'm uh, Margaret from Judy Martin today. Hang on, I'm opening up. I think she was talking with Alan Sanderson and he said the annual, and Doug could could verify this, the annual rental income from an acre of solar is somewhere between $5,500 and $8,000 an acre. Does that sound right, Doug? I really don't know anything about uh, what's, commonly you know a, a rental fee I, I don't i don't really know oh, that okay you guys own yours we do yeah okay okay so hang on let me go to my replacement fee handout it's coming there we go large-scale solar facility resource replacement fee uh, let, let me read the words. It says the fee shall be designed to minimize impact to agriculture and environmentally sensitive land and to be capable with continued agriculture use of land wherever possible, compatible, excuse me, um, for every acre of land assessed under the provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 16, uh, Chapter 61 or 61A. Um, in any of the previous three years to be occupied by solar facility, there would be uh, plantings and setbacks, and there would also be a replacement fee. And that's what we're doing as a committee right now is trying to figure out what that fee should be. How much per unit should that fee be? So, and and like I said, I, I don't have much of an opinion on that. Um, the map are there other saying, communities? Go ahead. Are there other communities doing this, John? 
Thank you, Bill. That was my question to the group last time we met. And no, we're the ones that are kind of blazing the trail. So oh. there isn't a template to follow. There isn't a model. And not only that, but we're going to be setting the tone for all these other towns. So you get one chance to do it right. Yes, Jim. I don't know. <laughs> See, and, and what I brought to the committee's attention was the problem that they're having in, in uh, Shootsbury, where they're clear cutting forests to put in 90 acres or more of solar. So I know in, the, in, in Waitley, that's the last thing we want to do. And, and I wanted the committee to consider something like a graduated fee, where the more acres that are going in, the, the more it's going to cost. And that wouldn't be necessarily for farmland, but it would be for forest land. And the other thing I, uh, I need to get a, a better idea about is what happens on land that's not under chapter. In other words, it's not APR, it's not 61. Do we have any recourse there? And I'm not sure whether we do or not. Because you, the, like, the open space map that I sent you this afternoon, there's a, there's a big, there's big swaths of land that is not under APR or chapter 61 that could be put into solar. So. Can I, right. Can I comment on this tangential? Uh, none of my land, which is in 60, none, none of my land, is, which is all in 61A is, is not shown yep. as that on, on the map. They, they miss you? Okay. Oh, yeah, they miss you. Okay. I'll write that down, Bill. So do you guys have any opinion? So the idea is that the fee, the idea is to have the fee be big enough that it discourages people from taking land out of, out of agriculture and putting it into solar if it's good agricultural land. Right, the fee, the, and more specifically, and this is a, a point to mention, is that the fee would be play, would be would go into the CPA's open space fund, right, to preserve more of agriculture, right, land, uh, more agricultural land. Excuse me. Right, I mean the limiting so far the limiting factor in our protecting agricultural land is landowners okay. wanting to put it into APR more than not having money, like mostly when people apply in Waitley, they get accepted and they get more or less fully funded, at least right now when we're at, you know, the state pays 95% and the town only has to pay 5%. Right. Um, so, I mean, I like the idea of having more money in the fund, but I'm not sure it actually makes a difference in most cases, at least right at the moment. Yeah. Is this an annual fee or a one time? Say that again, Bill, please. John, is this an annual fee or a one time fee? This would be a one time fee for the land coming okay. out. Mm -hmm. Jim, what do you think? Uh, I think it's going to be pretty hard to implement. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think so too. You know, um, what, do they, what do they do when they build a house, you know, on, on farmland? <laughs> yeah, I, I see your point is, is why are they getting, you know, why are they getting penalized? I don't know. It's, I, I think it's probably okay to do, but uh, I'm not sure the reasoning is for it. It's more like a tax. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and it, it affects two things. One, the sustainability of the farm. That's the part of the reason why you do it. And one, and the other one is that it, environmentally, it, it makes a lot of sense. And that's what we talked about before. So, environmentally, it makes sense to leave it in agriculture, or it makes correct. sense to, to produce more solar power. Cur both. <laughs> both. You can't have both ways. Take your pick. Yeah. I could argue both sides. Right. That's a dilemma. I think, you know, um, you know, the par part of it, I mean, it costs approximately like it, the, the solar field that we have on, 
on Route 5 in Christian Lane is a, a little over 2,000 panels. And it cost about $1.9 million to build. So the installed cost, you know, they, they calculate it by watt, but the installed cost is, is something like $800 a panel. Um, if you were to have a fee of, of you know, $10 a panel, that would certainly not discourage anybody from putting in a, a solar field. You know, the economics of it are, are pretty huge. Um, mm-hmm. And if you, if you started having really astronomical and burdensome fees that, that tried to discourage people from doing what they want with the land, that, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way too. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, if, if it, if the goal, you know, part of it too, is if, you know, that land where we put our solar in was, it's really lousy farm. That's, and that was my point all along. It's mar- put it, and, uh, if you're going to put it on ag land, put it on marginal land. Yeah. Right. 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 And, and I think that's an awful lot different. I mean, that's, that's, you know, high water table sand and there's no way to irrigate it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It just, uh, <laughs> it seems right. a lot, a lot different to me than, than if it was going in on, you know, real, real prime farm. And that's all. I, you know, it- and I, I, I said, okay, if you're gonna, if you've got a choice between putting it on forested land or farmland, put it on marginal forest land. But that met with some resistance as well. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no perfect answer. It you know, it's no. not like it's not like. But you know, I mean, if the goal, if the goal was to to just come up with enough money to sort of pay for the town's contribution to APRs, um, okay. you know, even a, a $2.50 uh, fee on our system would have raised, you know, five or $5,500, um, okay. which is a $100,000 payout. So, you know, I don't know how many more systems are are going to go in. This, of course, is not a retroactive thing. So no, right. Uh, hey, Doug, how many panels can you put on an acre? Do you know? You know, that's a good question. I think it's probably close to a thousand. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're simply fifteen square feet each. You know, but of course they don't. They're not laid out like uh, floor tiles or anything like that. Right. So, I mean, I right. I think our, you know, I don't really know the acreage of our system. I'm, I would guess it's about two and there's 2,000 panels. Okay. Um, so, if, if I had to come away with it with an idea from meeting with this committee tonight, and the idea was, that the replacement fee should be X number of dollars per panel as a, as a, as a, uh, a, a resource replacement fee. Even Let's use a round number of $10 per panel. Right? Would that okay. be something that you guys would, would agree with? Oh, let's see. A thousand. Hang on. I mean, for you know, for example, that would have been about twenty-two thousand additional dollars for the system that we installed. Um, <clears throat> you know, whereas the total cost was just you know was like just under two million dollars. It's it's a per one percent of the cost of the of the installation. Okay. So, and you know. I'm, that's like you know these ground mounted systems are in the in the black in four years, so I mean okay. you're talking about being in the black in four years and two weeks <laughs> okay. You know, okay 
I think it wouldn't, I'm sure it wouldn't deter anybody from put going ahead with a system. Okay. And I, but it, I don't know that. So I don't know what it, the goal is. <laughs> right. Okay. Actually, that that's a good, good question. What is our goal? You know, cause like you mentioned, if you're spending $1.9 million and then this is another expense on top of that, would it slow you down? Probably not. But. No, I mean, because I mean, it's be, it's all being it's all being financed anyway, uh, generally. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so so it, it really it, it acts the same way as any other permit. Well, Except I mean, like to, I, permits as you know, supervision to make sure things kind of get done right. Um, yeah. And, you know, if it's, if it's simply the town collecting a small amount of extra revenue every, every time a, a system goes in, and that kind of gets earmarked for space, okay. I mean, if that's the goal, then, then I think $10 a panel is, is pretty okay. reasonable. But, um, I mean, I think you'd have to be if you want to prevent solar pan fields from going in, I think you'd have to be a couple hundred bucks a panel, you know, well, yeah. that, well, which, see, which see, is, that's ridiculous. That's, right? that, well, that's what I brought to the committee's attention is, is if you're, you're a developer like Cinda Jones, right? Who's going to put in a hundred acres of panels and clear cut yeah. forest land to do it. That should be a graduated expense or graduated pro, uh, cost, where it may not be ten dollars a panel; it may be fifty dollars a panel, because it's completely different. The scale of it is completely different. But you know, I'm going to leave that alone. Right. For now. You might also. I mean, I know a lot of. Um, and I'm, I'm forgetting the details now, but people who put in like, you know, 200, you know, like a, a two megawatt system mm -hmm. there, there's, there's, they, what they actually do for, for permitting purposes is they would probably put in four, 500 KW systems mm -hmm. um, because the, it's much more difficult to permit the big system so you got it, 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 it you know it, it, you'd phase it over time yeah yeah and so you might end up with people who who are avoiding the bigger fees for bigger systems by putting it. in multiple small systems yep um, at, uh, at least on paper you know what i mean phase one phase two phase three right okay yeah all right the thought any other thoughts on this before I let it go? It's the related question that I have is that the state's also looking at these dual use solar regulations, which, mm. you know, they, they are kind of gung ho about encouraging people to put in solar on agricultural land on the theory that you could still produce agricultural products underneath it, which oh boy. seems to me to be a fairly unproven theory. And right. they've been, they've done those, there's some very small research plots at UMass where they, you know, grew peppers underneath them and concluded that they produced less because they were in the shade, which seems Imagine. surprising, <laughs> but they did not, they didn't look at like, what are your additional costs related to how you have to, you know, do all your farm work around the base of these panels and stuff. So I, I, granted, there may be some very appropriate uses of this you know, for grazing animals or something. But I tend to think that on really good farmland, like we have in Waitley, we would really prefer not to have um, land taken out of food production and put into dual use solar if we can help it. Okay. What, what they're proposing at the state level is that you could keep your land in chapter 61 if you put dual use solar on it. Um, wow. And I, you know, I think, that's a little problematic, <laughs> um, but, but it, it definitely is one of these things where you bump up against, 
sort of what's the, you know, community interest in maintaining our farmland base and what's the farmer's interest in, for example, okay. retiring, which seems like a pretty, you know, I want to, I want to hear from the rest of the so I, I can, I mean, anyway, I'm interested in any, if any of you have any thoughts about that. I, yeah, I want to hear some more opinions on that dual use solar. Bill, what do you think? It sounds difficult. Sounds, okay. Jim. I mean, it sounds, sounds difficult to me. I imagine with animals like chickens or something, it'd be good, but I'm not going to drive a tractor through a solar field. <laughs> <laughs> Doug. Yeah, I, I, uh, you know, all I can imagine is that you could you could possibly graze some animals under there. But, yes. you know, if, if if you could get away with avoiding a fee by by, uh, you know, keeping a couple goats out but out in a solar, solar field, um, but they have to be fenced anyway. Um, you know, I, it, I don't know. I could, could kind of see it leading to. Uh, a, a different then you got to interpret is it tr truly dual use um well i don't know god darn it doug oh, those great. are gonna come right back to this committee you know that right i know I know you know i um i helped uh a student at smith college over the summer uh do an economic analysis of land being used for solar and for for uh you know, ag production. And uh, there, there is absolutely no, no comparison whatsoever um, in terms of the dollars that can be returned per acre. Um, but, right. Okay. You know, and it, it, it Say really, that again, please. Oh, I, it, there's absolutely no comparison. Um, and, you know, I mean, maybe if you're, if you're, you know, growing field marijuana and you have a wonderful crop, it might be worth more than solar. But I, I don't okay. think there's, I don't think there's anything that would compare to the dollars that can be returned um, for solar. And, and kind okay. of what, what I was sort of trying to stress to this this young woman was, um, solar doesn't care if it if it's on extremely productive farmland or if it's on uh, you know the two acres out back that everybody always gets stuck in and and or you know we never get a good crop off of that and and that you know there's a lot it was just helping her with that project really made me think a lot about about it um <clears throat> but See if, you, if you're just going, if you're just going by the dollars um you, you you cannot make an argument against the winner. All right, now committee. John, Doug, is, that, is that something that we could see her her write up? Um, you know, it's it it might be possible. I I could try to dig back through my emails. I don't I don't even remember her name. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it's not a big deal. I mean, you did a, you just gave us a good summary, but I'm I was wondering whether it could be useful to John's committee. Well, you know, I, you know, I don't want to come back to the committee empty-handed. So, uh, as it stands right now, that our recommendation is ten dollars per panel as a resource replacement fee, um, using some of Doug's words. The return on solar per acre outweighs agriculture every day anyway. Now, here's something I'm going to go out on a limb and I want your opinion on it. Would you waive the $10 per acre panel, a $10 per panel fee if, there, if the, the producer was doing dual purpose? Was that the word you used, Margaret? Uh, uh, no. Agriculture and solar? No. No, no, no I don't think, fee. I don't think in Waitley we want to be encouraging people to do. I mean, the state, I think, is going to be encouraging people to do, do dual use solar. And I don't think okay. we should dual be helping use. them with that. OK, I, I think it's great if people want to do it in Buckland, you know, and graze their animals underneath. But I, I don't think we should be making it easier to take, okay. you know, Waitley soils out of 
out of food production. Okay. That's my opinion. All right. How about any other opinions on dual use? It, it's right now, this is a project that Steve Herbert, who is the, the head of uh, UMass Extension, has worked on for several years without any kind of results that I've seen. It's, it's still theoretical. Yeah. I mean, so. if it's, if, if the land, if it was going to be dual use, why would it be one, you know what I mean? I mean, if it's still going to be ag land. Yeah, I agree. What about um, trellis grapes? Yeah, one more time. What about trellis grapes for, uh, you know, viniculture, you know, for uh, wine production? Her, How well would they do in the shade? Uh, uh, I don't no, know. I... <laughs> apparently, apparently, a lot of cranberry growers are putting in dual use solar, but it's not because they think cranberries do well in the shade either. It's because they're they're not you know they're the bottom has fallen out of their marketplace. Ding 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 ding. That they're is correct. It, which is, I mean, I feel sympathetic to that. That seems really challenging, but it that... doesn't. It's not an indicator that cranberries love the shade. It's a market condition, right? Yes. Okay. All right. I have plenty of ammunition for our next meeting on that one. Any other new business? I have a question. Go ahead. All right. I'm curious, what's going on with the LaSalle property? Uh, I can give uh, a, or John, do you know that an answer? You probably do. No, you're right, I, you're right I, there. I, I yield your, I yield to you. I, I don't have the most up-to-date thing because I know the ZBA. So he's, so you might remember that when they, that his buyer came in, they said, we're going to reuse these greenhouses <laughs> to, um, yeah. to, for, you know, for marijuana. And that seemed, those are, as you all know, those are some pretty old greenhouses. So that seemed a little, I don't know, a little unlikely. Anyway, they have, they have they have concluded that that doesn't make sense, and they need to put in new greenhouses, and that requires them to get. I I I, I lose track of these zoning terms, so I can't remember whether they need a special permit or they need a variance, but they need something from the ZBA because their original proposal was for reusing the greenhouses, and because Waitley's solar bylaws were written to encourage reuse of existing greenhouses because the planning board was trying to make it easier for farmers to cash in on legal marijuana. So um, I went to the first ZBA hearing on this and said that in my opinion, this was a pretty good place to, um, to put marijuana, there's, you know, there's very few abutters and it's an odd parcel and it's hard to figure out who's going to do anything with it next. And John could really use the money. And I don't know, I was pretty sympathetic to the whole thing, rightly or wrongly. Um, but then the hearing got continued and it, to last, I think last Thursday night and I couldn't go last Thursday night and I don't know what happened. I, I don't, I think maybe they didn't make a decision yet because they reported on that meeting in the paper and there was nothing about it. So I have to call John and find out. Um, okay. They seemed uh, of mixed minds, I would say. You know, they were sort of annoyed with the people, who, you know, whoever this is, who, who are his buyer, who were saying, um, you know, why didn't you, why didn't you know this from the beginning? <laughs> Um, why did you give us a different plan? And now you're giving us a different plan. But at the same time, I think they were sympathetic to, you know, John's desire to have this move forward. So that's what I know. That's, that's a Thanks, pretty Mark. much the same thing I knew. Okay, sorry, then I jumped in. No, 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 I, I would yield to you any day. So. There we are. Um, any other new business? Any other questions? One kind of follow-up from the last two meetings is uh, we wanted to donate some money to the, the young gentleman that was killed in an in a a truck accident 
last February or March. And I ran that by the town administrator. And he said that the, the funds from our committee's budget couldn't be used for that purpose. So it kind of nipped that in the bud, so to speak. We ran the course, right, but it didn't turn out well. Yep. So uh, I think that's all I had for items on the agenda, unless there's any other business that we need to talk about. When's our next nope. meeting, John? Hang on, I'm looking right now. Uh, the second Tuesday of November is the ninth. And I the, new, the new rules for the town is all meetings from this point forward have to be by Zoom, which I don't particularly like, but I'm getting better at it. So thanks for setting it up, John. Yeah, I, you know, as long as I don't hit snags or technical difficulties, I think I can can kind of fake my way through it. I have a so question. You are alone, John. John, yeah, I have right. a question about Zoom. I am. Um, I do we have to record the meetings because I a, a few, one of in one of our after one of our early Zoom meetings somebody I ran into someone at the post office and they said oh I just saw you you know on the FCAT public access TV <laughs> and I thought right. I'm not really accustomed to you know I think people who are on more important and powerful boards than the Ag Commission get used to the fact that people are listening into their every um, comments. Yes. And I feel that I have not internalized that and I'm sometimes more frank than I should be. And I'm wondering if, yeah. is it an open meeting law requirement that now we're on Zoom, we have to record it or could we just skip that? And then they wouldn't uh, be able what? to public access. I ask. Recording. Because I, I fall into that same category where I say more than I should. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, that would be great to know. I will find out any final comments. All right, everyone. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I have 758. So it's just about perfect. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Right, motion, John. To, motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Okay. Second. Thank you all. Second. All right. Okay. Have, have a good night. Bye-bye. And go Red Sox.